what's the chances of Peter Kelly lying, exaggerating, misleading you about his salmon? Hello, Chef Marcus Giuliano here, and I'm your chef on a mission, and I am fired up today. I am so fired up. That's because we're gonna talk about food fraud. I uh, talked to a couple chefs today. Uh, first restaurant up. Uh, so I went to Hudson Valley Restaurant Week because it's coming up, and I made a phone call to them because you know Hudson Valley Restaurant Week charges all the restaurants like seven, eight hundred bucks to join. Yeah. So me as a restaurateur, I got to fork up eight hundred bucks, seven hundred bucks at that, whatever it is, something in that realm. We paid eight hundred before, and we did it. Then they get sponsors to come in at 5,000, 10,000, uh, 800 restaurants join. My estimation is, you know, what are they making? A quarter of a million dollars or more. Uh, Hudson Valley Table is a magazine that does it. And um, so I wanna know where that money goes. Like, because they've always claimed it goes to marketing. Do you need a quarter of a million dollars to market um, Hudson Valley Restaurant Week? Uh, they say they do. I, I know Facebook ads with, to, 15 grand, I can do an insane amount of business. A quarter, $50,000, I can do an insane amount of business uh, with with, Insta, with uh, Facebook ads and stuff like that, and YouTube ads, uh, dirt cheap YouTube ads, by the way. So where does that money go? My feeling is that they exploit the restaurants. It's my personal feeling, they exploit the restaurants, somebody's making money, I have to give food away, and the real bottom line is a lot of restaurants don't know how to promote themselves and, and band together and do this themselves and do a grassroots marketing thing. So now you got a, you got somebody like Hudson Valley uh, Restaurant Week, which I think is a big cash machine for somebody. So I'm on their website, I'm looking through the chefs. I'm like, oh, Peter Kelly, I know him, and he's a famous chef in Westchester County. I click his website, go over, and sure enough, Peter Kelly's serving wild salmon. It's wild salmon's on his menu. So I said, huh, what's the chances of Peter Kelly lying? exaggerating, misleading you about his salmon. Pick up the phone, I call, I speak to the guy who answers the phone. Jamie, you weren't here for this. You know what the guy on the phone told me? That it's wild and it's from New York State, the salmon. Wild New York State salmon. Wow. I said, that's not correct. <laughs> so that's not correct. That's a new one. Well, that's up in the, that's up like in the St. Lawrence yeah. River, right? Yeah. So I was like, that's not correct. Can I speak to the chef? He goes to the chef and says, and they come back and he goes, it's fresh. Um, Alaskan. And I said, okay, well, Alaskan's not in season right now. Um, can I talk to the chef? And he goes, no, the chef's busy. He goes, but you can talk to the manager, the restaurant manager. I said, sure. So I spoke to the restaurant manager and the restaurant manager tries to finagle his way. See, the problem with these places is they know farm, farm salmon is no good. And you go on their website and they use stuff like sustainable. I went through all the chefs, cab, crab tree, kettle house, sustainable organic or uh, sustainable Scottish salmon, uh, organic uh, Faroe Islands, Terrapin, Organic King Salmon. They're all, they all list as sustainable and organic crap so they can fool you. It's a, there's no such thing as a better farm salmon when it comes to, when it comes to open net farming in the ocean. It's just, it's, it's all fed the same stuff. It's, it's an industry that there's no right way to do the wrong thing. So if you're a chef and you're listening to this, educate yourself and don't let me the one be calling your restaurant. So I speak to the manager and he's just backpedaling this one. He's telling me, well, it's wild and we get it from the Pacific sometimes. I'm like, but wait a second, you're telling me you get it from Alaska all the time and now you told me you get it from the Pacific sometimes. I said, the Pacific and Alaska are the same thing. And I start backing him into a corner and he's, I was like, so I don't understand, is it wild or farm? Cause you're telling me like it's, like it's out in the ocean and but they're, they're feeding it and they're, it's coming from fisheries and they're catching it and, and you don't know, I'm like, so he, he knows I'm backing him into a corner so I just keep saying, questioning him. So the chef gets on the phone, James. And I speak to James, and James is insistent. You know, oh yeah, we're serving wild, we're serving wild. I got the box right here. I said, here's my phone number, text me a picture. He says, I'm reading the label. I said, text me a picture. I'm hoping he would text me while I was on the phone, but he didn't. He called me back 10, 15 minutes later. That's because he called his seafood vendor, okay, to find out what he was really serving me. And I explained to him, I said, listen, 
First he goes, what is your reference? Because I told him Wild Alaskan Salmon's not in season. I went through the rundown of this. And he goes, what's your reference? I said, 20 years of sustainable seafood dedication and experience. I said, I'm a chef by trade and I'm a food food act activist and I care about what I eat and I got 20 years experience under my belt of this kind of stuff. And let me tell you something. I just spoke to the people from a seafood company today, Alaska Wild, and they're not casting their nets until June. The season shut down. Uh, with, you know, there's not much, not much happening in Alaska. Maybe a few pockets. I didn't say that. Maybe a few pockets of troll king salmon, but that stuff's not coming to New York. Okay, I might not even leave Alaska, and it's it's, it's very, very, very rare. So, um, and I did speak to the people from Alaska Wild this morning. Great conversation with them. Uh, Longtime fisher, f fishing family. Uh, really, really cool uh, uh, story, and had a great conversation with them. So. He starts backpedaling. He's like, well, it's it's out there in the ocean and it's and I was like, listen, 99% sure you're serving farm salmon. Nine, 99 guarantee. No, I'm reading the box and the box says King Wild King Salmon. I said, so text me a picture of it. And he wouldn't text me while I was on the phone. So lo and behold, he calls me back 10, 15 minutes later. He's like, I have to apologize to you. We're serving Scottish King Salmon. Farm Scottish King Salmon. I have to apologize to you. You know, this stuff. I'm like, dude, you're the chef. You should know this. I said, you're the chef. You should know this. You're misleading people. And I went down the rundown of what's wrong with farmed salmon. Because um, a lot of these chefs just be like, yeah, I know it's bad, but, you know, Joe from the seafood distributor said it's okay and it's sustainable and I'm going to serve it. And so every time you call these chefs and you ask them, they know that it's bad and they try to, they try to justify and wrap it around somehow. The next restaurant that I called, same, same concept. I got their number off of Hudson Valley Restaurant Week. That video is going to be next. And this guy was even better. I mean, he was, he really he just flustered for answered. So the chef was like, I got to apologize. I'm sorry. So then I threw it on him. I said, Hey, I see you have diver scallops on your menu. Just talking to a guy from Maine yesterday, two days ago, and basically diver scallop season shut down. I said, there might be one or two small areas open. I said, but let me tell you something. If you're putting diver scallops on your menu and you're charging for it, make sure that you're giving credit to that guy who jumps down in icy cold waters and sits there to hand pick scallops. There's not many guys that are willing to do that. So if you're representing that, Make sure it's properly on your menu. So you might want to look and see where your scallops are coming from too. And this is Peter Kelly. Peter Kelly at Xavier's. Is it Xavier's? What restaurant was it? As I know he just sold one of his restaurants, right? Um, Peter Kelly, where are we at here? Uh, I took a picture of a snapshot. Let me get this on my computer screen here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sorry that I'm fumbling. Uh, let's see. Ex Xavier's. Xavier's restaurant in Congers. And yeah, so Wild King Salmon, I said, hey, you got to remove that. And so what he told me, the chef told me was, oh yeah, this just happened last month. I said, how long have you been serving Wild? He goes, oh, as long as I can remember. I said, well, the season shut down in October. So chances are you've been serving this for months. And he's like, well, my seafood vendor said it switched last month. Again, I don't believe a word they're saying. The bottom line is, people, these chefs, it doesn't matter who they are, famous or not famous, Peter Kelly needs to be held to higher standards. He's a celebrity chef. He's making tons of money by misleading you and ripping you off. And go to my site, nofarmsalmon.com. Go to Alex, Alex Morton's site. Go to um, salmonfarmingkills.com. Salmon farming is a disaster. Open pen salmon farming in the ocean is a disaster. Disaster. It kills everything in its path. It kills the wild salmon. It, 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 it's it's an it's a environmental disaster. And somebody like Peter Kelly is making bank on selling this stuff and charging extra and charging you for it. And the people that are out there that are labeling their stuff as organic wild salmon, organic farm salmon, shame on them. Shame, shame, shame. Because there's no such thing as organic farm salmon. It's a self-regulated term. And these chefs know, again, they know that they're serving something bad, but they put that word organic in front of it and they make them feel better because they're too lazy to, to, to do the proper research and educate themselves or buy the real deal wild salmon year round. You have to buy it frozen. But in the, and I said to the one chef, he goes, well, we don't buy frozen seafood. I said, well, most sushi restaurants do. So there's nothing wrong with it. Get over it. I mean, that's the facts. And he goes, yeah, I know that. And I said, so buy something that's frozen at sea, frozen on shore, buy something that's frozen properly. And then you can serve frozen salmon year round. You won't have somebody like me calling your restaurant. So Peter Kelly, if you, if you're watching this tweet, Peter Kelly, 
his restaurants, do something, get this, get this in his hands. They said they were gonna change the menu, hopefully they do, but there's no excuse. There should be class action lawsuits because there have been class action lawsuits in the past against chefs and restaurants, against restaurants, tours who have been misleading people. And I gotta tell you, if you have some kind of allergy or something, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a big deal. So thanks for watching.